I've been trying to get better at reporting my income and outcome every month. There are some channels I follow and they're really good at this and they lay it all out on spreadsheets and charts and they go through everything in minute detail. Uh, but I'm doing so many other videos at the moment and things change so fast, it's just my brain just doesn't care. Sorry about that. But I, I, I did want to give like a brief overview of how we're doing end of April. Um, April is the end of my big outgoings for the year. So I've made a list of a few things. So in terms of outgoings, um, I pay my rent every six months because I don't pass the financial checks for a tenancy. So when I first moved in here six years ago, I was on a six month tenancy. Uh, they were happy for me to move in with no credit checks provided I paid the whole six months in advance up front, which was doable because I had spare money, I had savings. Another good reason for having savings is the rent situation. And I've been doing that ever since. So although I am now on a yearly contract, I still pay my rent every six months. And I pay every April and every October. So I paid up my rent um, around the middle of April and that was £3,600. And then that will cover me for the next six months. This is the second of my two payments in October when I pay again, presuming I pay again, that is when my contract is up for renewal and I will see how much my rent may go up again this year. I was quite lucky for the first four years my rent never went up and then post-Covid and as the cost of living crisis picked up we started to see a rise of £50 per month uh, which has been doable because when I look around at other places and I think about, oh, maybe I should move. And I look at how much other places are that are of a similar quality to where I am and give me the similar quality of life. Um, they're more expensive. They're not horrifically more expensive for, a, I don't know, I haven't looked at any places, but I wouldn't want to be any smaller than I am now. And then, of course, there's the moves that, that come, or the extra costs that come with it. So you've got to hire removal men. Uh, you might have to get rid of stuff. You might need to buy new stuff. Uh, you might have to put stuff in storage. There's uh, the extra costs that go with getting your old deposit back, putting in a new deposit, and it just spirals. And I still wouldn't get the credit checks, so I might have to pay a year in advance because I've seen this happening a lot in the last couple of years where a lot of tenancies have now been a whole year in advance, which is just a joke. So, uh, you know, I stick with it. Um, other bills that are unusual well I paid up my pension for the year my aim was to put in a total of 3,600 a year that's including the 20% that the government puts in for me as a non-taxpayer so I am aiming to do that each tax year and because I only started my pension this January I had a lot of catching up to do but I also ha this year I have several fixed rates savings accounts maturing at various points in the year and so I was able to top up that account, that pension account, before the end of the tax year and then start again with, uh, it'll be in May, will be my new year of payments. So this month my pension received an extra £2,496 but that doesn't affect my usual outgoings and incomings because like I said this is coming out of other savings that I've had stashed away gaining interest. There isn't much interest coming from those accounts if I decided to renew them. I'm better off sticking with the easy access account I have at the moment which is Tandem which is paying 4.90 and I'm better off investing the money as it comes out of those fixed accounts into my pension and I also now have a stocks and shares ISA. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I've put aside six months of emergency savings, I've got a car fund building up and they're gaining interest on their own, both those those pots because I've got those in a 5% interest easy access account as well, a separate account that I've put aside specially for that. Um, so that was my other big outgoing. What else has been going out? Well I've already talked about food, £24 this month physically um, eaten food and I've talked about this in my other videos have a look for my food videos to understand how I'd work out my food budget 
Um, yeah, my ISA, I now pay out £25 a month to that. My pension, a standard, gets £192 a month, which tops up to 240 with the government money. Um, council tax is now 105 uh, my water is uh, is four, fourteen pounds fifteen, and they've just done another meter check, and it's now going up to fourteen pounds forty a month from May. So that's higher than it has been for a while. Um, my energy bills: I pay a forty pound direct debit monthly to my gas and electricity provider. Uh, this month just gone, I've uh, I physically used £35 pounds worth of gas and electric, which is pretty much standard for how it's going to be now for, I think, for the rest of the year. The price changes don't make much difference to me because I don't use a lot in the first place. Um, in terms of income, income has been an interesting one. Survey income down. I've only made about £120 pounds on surveys this month. It's just been a bit of a ropey month, really. Some survey sites are offering almost nothing. I get screened out of a lot of stuff. La di da di da. Um, my cl little part-time cleaning job, which is eight and a half hours a week, this month has paid three hundred and sixty-nine pounds. Um, YouTube paid me one hundred and sixty-two pounds and five pence. Interest was higher this month. I have still have several saving accounts accruing interest and paying out monthly. And because I had a fixed rate end. And I've got the money back from that, but it pays the interest in one go. So this month's interest was £582, and that's all been reinvested. That's all been taken care of. The only other thing was uh, Universal Credit, which paid a lot this month. And that's because of the pension payments. So it classes my payments into my private pension as an expense, which I put on to Universal Credit. So that ramps up my expenses quite a lot in a normal month. It's £192. But of course, because this month I've topped it up for the end of the tax year and paid out 2496 that's made my expenses look absolutely enormous. Now, of course, they haven't paid all that because there is still a ceiling, even though I am on the transitionary year for universal credit and some of the rules don't apply there is still a ceiling of things I presume that they will pay. Uh, but because of that pension payment, this month for Universal Credit, I've been paid £785. Now, my income wasn't its best this month, and this is again one of the problems with how Universal Credit works and how it works for self-employed people, because there are some months when my income is really good, like it may, might pay, say, £1,200. There are some months when it's not, and it might only pay, say, 800 It depends on what's going on. And again, with the expenses, that can be a lot higher. It can be a lot lower. So there's no... There's no even, like, I work a regular job and this is what I get paid every month. There's no, oh, these are the only things I pay out for, out for that I can claim for, and that's the same every month. It changes all the time. So what do you do with self-employment is you look at it over an amount of time, and that's why using spreadsheets is really good. So I can look at all my spreadsheets for my business where everything is already added up in formulas and I just look at the end and I can see where my income for the year, for the tax year, is going in terms of my business, in terms of self-employment. So I know that I am on track to have a good year this year for the tax year for self-assessment but universal credit will look at that month where i got 785 and we'll look at that as a bad month because my expenses were high because of the pension now i know that when i go in and see my work coach and i do have an appointment in may to see her for my three month review we talk about that so i make a point of saying look this is why that was so high this month is because of that pension and this is why that pension payment was so big and they don't seem to be that bothered um, but if I was on regular universal credit I have no idea how that would work so if you are self-employed and you have a private pension and you are on the transitional year make the most of this and some other people have commented you know if they're paying you money to put money into your pension do it just do it 
get what you can. So it's enabled me to overpay pensions and stuff. And Universal Credit are giving me some of the money back. I don't know how all this works. Anyway, I'm taking the money because they signed me up. They said that I could have Universal Credit for a year. So that's what I'm doing. Um... But yeah, I, I am looking at a good year this year. Things will change slightly next year because obviously Universal Credit will be gone by the... Uh, sometime in September that'll be gone this year for me. I've already accounted for payments up to September so I know that this year I'm okay. It's how that changes next year in terms of not having the Universal Credit money and upping the side hustles that I already have or and finding new side hustles to replace that money that I have received from Universal Credit this year. Uh, so I have a couple of pie charts to show you. Uh, one is my income and that's and you can see all my income streams there. There's all sorts of things there. There's passive income, there's gifted money, there is actual income, there is Universal Credit, there are donations, there is YouTube, everything's there. You can see all the percentage numbers based on Everything that comes into my pot of self-employment and then that gets declared at the end of the year and the tax year has now ended. I am going to set aside some days, uh, like four or five days in June where I will go through and do my self-assessment. My self-assessment is really quick. It takes me a few hours because all my spreadsheets are always up to date and I already know the numbers. I just need to just quickly have a look through, make sure that all the formulas are still correct. No reason why they shouldn't be. Um, and I've already gone through and rechecked those already and then I can just put that in and that's me done for another year. I won't owe any tax because by the time I've been, done all my expenses etc um, I end up below the tax threshold plus universal credit is an untaxable benefit so that doesn't even count anyway. My other pie chart here is my outgoings pie chart. I've added two things in here which aren't really expenses so as you can see I've added the ISA and I've added the pension because what I've done I've decided to add those into my emergency fund so my emergency fund which was six months of bills was uh, 5,700 and something around that and I've upped it now to just over seven thousand, seven thousand and thirty-six pounds, because I've decided that if I had six months where I needed that emergency pot, I could still keep paying into my pension and my ISA. But they're not really expenses because it's still my money. I'm just moving it from one savings account to another, and it's going to be earning at some point. Probably not soon, but it will at some point start to accrue money. Um, it is, they are 20 year funds, my pension will be there for 20 years, I am running the ISA in tandem with that, but the ISA of course is an access account, so if I did run into serious trouble or I wanted to change how I invested my money, I could pick up that ISA, empty it, move it, whatever. But I have added those into my expenses. And it now means that for the first time in years, rent is no longer my biggest expense for the year. But of course, the pension and the ISA is showing up extra amounts because I'm shoving in um, the money that's coming out of fixed accounts that I have maturing and I'm throwing extra in it to play catch up basically that's what I'm doing so that's why the percentages on the pension and the ISA look so huge on this pie chart next year that will change because I will just go back to just doing uh, the regular monthly payments simply because all my spare funds will have been allocated there won't be anything left I am down to income so that's why those charts look like they do at the moment. Um, and that's really my update. Um, from now on, I mean, I've got my business insurance to pay at the beginning of May. I have been with Simply Business for a number of years, but the renewal was £337 this year, and I cannot justify that for the way my business has changed over the last couple of years. I got some quotes, 
um, I got a quote from Direct Line and for what I need for my business my insurance is going to be £69 for the year so I'm going for that so that'll be my last unusual expense for the year now I'm just down until October I will now be down to just paying out the usual so the food the, the everything else pile um, Persia out to my service package council tax water gas and electric food the usual bits and pieces so it's going to be quite simple from from now on I've survived the first four months of the year paying out all the big bills and again, that's why the spreadsheets are so good, because I know when those bills are coming. I know how to plan for them. They don't impact my quality of life or my finances because the money is already there. You have to stay on top of the, the big bills when you know they're coming. And by doing that, it means that I can pay for things like my car insurance and my home insurance and things like that um, all in one go. I don't have to do monthly payments, which accrue extra costs because they whack on the interest for the convenience of it. So I don't have to do any of that. So that's really uh, my end of April financial update. It's a little bit hit and miss. It's not very specific. I might do one in May that just talks about the specifics of exactly what I spend every month. And I'm probably due to do an update of that. But then that will pretty much be it until October when the rent renewal becomes... Uh, the elephant in the room again as it does every year anyway so that's that i hope that's been interesting if i've missed anything off that i should have included like i forgot to mention that i did pay my home insurance this month as well that was the other big bill that was 225 pounds um, i'm stuck with the insurance company i use because it's tied to my tenancy because it's a landlord's tenancy insurance and i know that some tenancies work like this because it protects the landlord from me trashing you know the carpets the fridge freezer or smashing windows and things um it's a bit of a pain but i don't know what home insurance is so maybe 225 pounds for home insurance is competitive i don't know i don't even want to know because there's nothing i can do about it so that's that i hope it's been interesting add in any comments on anything um that you need help with or that you're not sure about anything that's not clear and i'll speak to you again soon Thanks for watching. Bye bye.